I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, are about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today is an extraordinary woman who is the co-owner of the very popular Panya Bistro. She is Annie Young, and today we are going beyond Honolulu restaurants. Hey, Annie, welcome to the show. Hey, Rusty, thank you. Thank you for uh, bringing me in for your special 117 show. Oh, I'm so excited. You know, we have so much to talk about, and I know that you and your sister are co-owners of Panya Bistro, um, but I want to first ask you about if you can tell me a bit about your background. Um, so we are born and raised in Hong Kong, and uh, when I was 15, I, I asked to go to a boarding school in England for about two years, and after that, I came here um, to go to um, university college here in Hawaii. <laughs> so you attended Hawaii Pacific College before it was Hawaii Pacific University, and then you went to University of Hawaii. Is that true? Yeah, that's, that's the steps. <laughs> <laughs> and Annie, when you were in boarding school in England, how was that experience for you? Uh, so when we have to fly to um, London from Hong Kong, you have to make, uh, you know, transit. So uh, 15 years old, <laughs> it was like, I don't know. I think I was kind of brave. <laughs> and um, it kind of helped me to develop the um, independence, alertness, and, you know, what's going on, things like that. In like when you're traveling, you have your luggage, you cannot lose any bags, any, you know, uh, your belongings and is anybody like, you know, following you, that kind of stuff. So it's, it built up my independence and um, part of growing up. Yeah. And that, that adds to your toughness. I can see why you are how you are now. And tell me about your two kids, Max and Samara. How are they doing? Uh, I have uh, a junior and a senior um, in high school. So Max will be, is in go, he's going Punahou and he'll be uh, graduating this year. And Samara is at Ilani and he, she's a junior. And they're helping out at your restaurants? Uh, yes, actually this, uh, during this uh, summer, even Max came and uh, worked with us in the restaurant. Samara's been uh, helping us since uh, last year. She was doing host, you know, and the bakery cashier. But uh, during this COVID time, she uh, kind of promoted herself to be the server, the foot run, everything. So I, I'm happy to see see the the growth, you know, of them just working in our business. No, I, when I go to Panya, I love, I love seeing them uh, working there as well. And I know that your dad has been such a great influence on you and your sister, Alice. Uh, what, what did you learn from your dad, Annie? Uh, my dad, we are in a very traditional Chinese family. <laughs> so, uh, and dad is like a 300% businessman. So we we talk more business than you know we don't we don't say oh I love you you know <laughs> That's, that has never been part of our conversation. So um, he always makes sure that we have a goal, we have a plan. You know, like every week he when we have like a lunch on Sunday, that's our tradition. Um, he asks, so what is your plan? every week <laughs> yeah so he he taught us about business how to be persistent how to be um 
you know, a, a person in your business, you know. No, I like hearing that. Was it was it challenging, you know, to for you and your sister as women, you know, to, um, you know, really learn the business and and to get through some adversities? I mean, how how did he help you with that? He asked questions every day, so he'll call us every day and ask how's business. So, uh, it's we know there's somebody checking on us, so we cannot be slacking any day. It's like. This is like for the last, you know, 20 years or so. Yeah. We lost him. We lost him 2016. So um, it's a big loss for both me and my sister. But I think he taught us enough um, in the past years to, to help us to stay at where we are and continue working as if he's around. Annie, you and your sister Alice, you guys make such a great team together, but... Do you guys ever fight? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, 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 of course, you know, um, we, we have a little age group uh, gap, age difference. So it's, I would say like, oh my God, it's like a different generation almost. Okay. But um, somewhat, somehow with our upbringing from our family, my dad's influence, we are, we would eventually think ultimately it's the same point of view. And however, she would take a little different um, approach because of our personality. And uh, however, we, we managed to come to our agreement. Um, it's like, uh, we, I need to, we need to learn how to give and take sometimes. So sometimes we'll take my approach, sometimes we'll adopt hers. And, you know, we'll see which one works better. And, you know, we can always, you know, change or we can uh, re rethink or how, how we should take the, the approach, you know. So uh, we are flexible because at the end, like, we are the two person, two bosses, right? So <laughs> we, can, we can work it out eventually, yeah. Annie, so. your, your Panya Bakery first opened in 1997 at McCulley Shopping Center. What was unique mm -hmm. about uh, that, that business for you? Uh, we were the first bakery that introduced self-service. So you, you come to the shop, you, first of all, you, you get the tongs and the tray. You can, you can go through the all different showcase uh, covered uh, to pick your piece of uh, baked goods because sometimes they oh this is too burned or oh, I like the lighter one I like the darker one or oh this one the strawberry looks bigger <laughs> so it's it's very um, comfortable and clean for you to choose your own baked goods rather than you have to take a ticket and wait for the lady to say number 96 you know <laughs> to come and you know serve you and then you walk up and down the showcase so uh, yes, we were the first bakery to introduce uh, self-service. I remember that. And since then, a lot of other businesses were copying, copying you. And during that time, Annie, you guys also opened up a coffee shop near that ward area where, where that Hokua is now. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so after, after opening of, in a few months, we start um, also producing desserts you know, like cakes like that. And uh, the customer was saying, like, oh, you should have a, a, a coffee shop. You have a place to sit down to enjoy such good pastries and cakes. So we can, we were, then we were thinking like, um, because uh, the, our product was so loved <laughs> by the community here. So we decided to um, go into our next stage, which is like a sit down service, uh, a, a coffee shop style operation and that was uh, the the location in a two-story building uh we taking the entire downstairs the ground floor behind the 7-eleven with the gas station you know so that was our first sit down operation and in the back we have like a commercial grade bake shop to support uh we started wholesale to hotels and 
a lot of other small businesses. So that's how we evolved from a, a first a small bakery to be a sit down service plus wholesale business. And then Annie, once that location closed, you moved to Ala Moana. What was challenging for you going to the Ala Moana location? Um, because of you know the the cost of the 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 rent over there, right? Is so high, so we couldn't be doing any production over there. So we we assigned the entire uh, space to be just for retail bakery and restaurant and whatever the kitchen size do we need and the production for the pastry we have to find a central kitchen to back up so at that point we have to have uh, two locations one is for the retail the, the dining service and on the other side we have uh, the warehouse at uh, cook and queen street uh, we have a, like a 6,000 square feet warehouse that is close enough for us to feed, you know, the Alamona Panya Bistro like about six to eight times a day for different, you know, supplies. No, I remember that because I, yeah. I would go to your Alamona location. That's where I first met you. And and yeah, that was a challenging situation for you and your sister. But once your lease finished then mm. it it all worked out to come full circle to move into hokua because uh pf chang's had closed in that original location so now panya bistro at hokua you came full circle and you yes. know i know that you and your employees i mean your employees are like your second family so tell me how special being back at Hokua now and with your employees is to you? Uh, for the location, we, 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 we know that is, this is, um, is like a amazing story because a lot of our customer from day one, they know, oh my God, you come back here. It's like a, you know, you're coming back home. Like, you know where you were before, right? And I say, yeah, it was like exactly like hundred feet away. So we, we love this location because it's, um, we have the both indoor outdoor seating and the parking right there, parking is like prime for our operation. So um, we love it back here and, and it's much bigger. So it's double the size what we can um, sit in Ala Moana. So this is our next stage of our business. And we have focused to be put on the dining service. And thank goodness it's all happening right because we have a strong crew, both at the back of the house and the front of the house. And you can see a lot of them was with us like over 10 years. Uh, one of our manager was with, with us since like day one of the Panya Bakery. And uh, we have a, we, you know, we have a small, it's a small operation, but I, I believe we, we bonded really well. We, we work with each other and we're making this working every day. <laughs> Annie, you know, during this coronavirus time period, I mean, a lot of restaurants have been closing. What are you doing to survive? Uh, as I said, thank goodness, we have outdoor seating and indoor seating. And um, our whole business model has changed because we lost like 80% of all our business that come from um, wholesale, wholesale in terms of like hotels, uh, a lot of the Japanese wedding cakes and it, it, it put us in a totally different um, mode that we only can rely on the restaurant operation with dining and takeout. Mm -hmm. And the dining capacity was cut to less than half. It's like only 30 to 40% if we can sit every single chair. But 
you know, you there's not, I mean, the, because of the table arrangement with the social distancing, so it limits our capacity to the least lower level. So um, thank goodness, as what every every customer when they come here say, oh, thank goodness you have outdoor seating. And then I say, yes. And that's what everybody prefer nowadays to be sitting outside. And they're happy with our social distancing um, format yeah. on the uh, sitting. So they feel very safe. And internally, um, all the staff have to take like very serious, um, you know, practice on a daily basis that they have to keep cleaning uh, all the touching area, like the doors, uh, all the tables and chairs was cleaned with sanitizer after each uh, customers. And we have to check in all the customers with the temperature before they come into the premises. And then they also have to use sanitizer before they come in. So we, we, we put our, um, the, the guard to the highest level to in order to protect all the customers coming into our restaurant to dine in or even take out, you know? So this is our number one priority right now. So well, a lot and, of work. And <laughs> I, have a, I have a lot of lunch meetings and dinner meetings at Panya that you know I have. And I wanna to talk to you about my books. Um, you know, obviously you know it's about <laughs> creating a culture of excellence and leadership. I want to ask you, what kind of leader are you? I am an emotion one. emotional one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but you know, I, you, you run your business with your personality too, right? So, um, and I, and when, I'm, when I talk to my employees, sometimes I talk and they say, okay, stop yelling at us. Like, I'm not yelling. I was just talking with a very firm voice, you know? So um, <laughs> it, it, it takes a lot <laughs> to be a good leader, you know, in, in an uh, organization. So, but it's a daily thing. We, we work on it every day, every shift. We need to uh, work what's work up to what's what we needed you know at that on that day <laughs> it's a daily changing you know so uh very challenging yeah because <laughs> basically you know you're a coach you're trying to coach and guide them to a accomplish the goals that you guys have for your restaurant right yes very true but sometimes you know uh we have we have a pretty good stable uh team over here that they are basically they know what needs sometimes <laughs> most of the times so also they would give the input oh can we just do this should we just do this and then you know we kind of like work together but of course we i i want to maintain my service level at a a, a good standard so all my customer you know, when they, all the customer come in, I told them they have expectations. So we need to do a, offer a, a good service level. So all the customer be enjoy the good food and have good service. So ultimately that's our goal every day. Well, Annie, it's a constant striving for excellence, obviously. And I gotta say, you know, I need the laksa. Your laksa and the desserts that you have. I mean, it's not a want, it's a need. and. You have such a wide variety of a menu. Why, why do you guys have such a wide, wide range of menu? Uh, the menu was built not within months. It was years. Uh, we built every time we, you know, we served the same menu and we feel like, oh, we should add something new. And me and my sister, especially Alice, she's like, oh, uh, what should we what should we offer so but i would tell you a lot of times we offer the food that we want to eat <laughs> so <laughs> so we we cook for ourselves and then we say oh actually we can serve this and then we we practice we we, we kind of like refined it to the to the way that we let customer taste sometimes you know the regular say, oh it's good oh you need something you know that kind of input 
So we perfecting it and well, we can put on the menu now, you know? So it, it's day by day building a big menu like ours. But the, the thing is like, we use the same ingredient, but we, we use a different, we cook in a different way or cut in a different way. And um, that's how we, we, we offer a big menu that the, the idea is if you come in with a group of you know, friends or family, everybody can enjoy their preference. You can have ramen and burger at the same time. And nowadays we introduce more healthy food like vegetables, you know, stir fry, not necessarily like deep fried or, you know, fancy cooking, but like steamed fish is something very simple, healthy that you, you, you feel good after eating it and then you can eat it very frequently. Like you can eat it almost like every day. And, and your favorite dish, laksa, the laksa noodle. Uh, I say, uh, okay, it's a Southeast Asian noodle and is very popular in our restaurant. So all my friends or customers, I, I, I was trying to try the other dishes, but you know, I have to have the laksa. Otherwise I say, yeah, otherwise you don't feel like you've been to Panya, right? <laughs> so, and a lot of them come here just for the laksa, you know? Well, so it's a, it's a say, tough oh, decision. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you have, that's why I tell them you have to come back more often. So you feel okay to, to let go the laksa and try other dishes, you know? Annie, I want to ask you, you know, about more of a, like, have you had a tough personal challenge that you have to deal with, um, you know, through these years that, that you overcame? Um, other than moving, you know, relocating, that kind of thing, I think um, it would be down to trusting people for the uh, how how you know when you when you when you have workers or team management, you you, you need to be able to trust them or. That was a big challenge from my experience running this operation because, um, you know, like recipe and things like that, it, it become like a, 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 it's, a it's an asset or the property of a, of a business. And if the person is not truthful or, you know, loyal to your business, it become a, a big challenge for us. But um, at that point, yes, but now we learned, we, we have to have confidence with our own operations. And we spent, this is 23 years, the 23rd years. So, so after these years, we build a brand. So uh, we would like to think that, we would like to achieve that thinking like the product from Panya will give you the assurance of quality and the consistency that you will have the same dish or the same dessert taste every time the same when you, you know, enjoy Panya's product. So that's something uh, I think uh, we're trying to achieve. And what do you think? No, you're, you're definitely doing it. And, and Annie, what I find impressive is how you guys started as a small bakery and then how you grew it, you know, to moving to different locations, you know, and, and great leaders, they always find a way to adapt and adjust and they navigate their way uh, to, to success. And I know that you, your family is very important to you, obviously, but you truly care about the families of all of your employees because they all depend on you and their jobs. And, you know, for you to take risks along the way, calculated risks, how important mm -hmm. was it for you looking back to take those risks? Um, we, I would say, we need, we've been changing business, business model all this way uh, by expanding. So um, the risk is we need to, everybody like 
work as a team and they have to perform, give, make the performance every day. So uh, as, as I said, the consistency of the dish, of each food item that come out, the quality is, is our key when we have a restaurant. So you have, the, you can meet the expectation of each customer when they come in to dine in, you know, to enjoy your food. So I think people is the key in our operations. Yeah, no, it definitely <laughs> is. And I can see how your, you know, services is an important part, obviously. You're talking about the, the food being a, an important part as well. What's, what's, um, what's the, the best advice you ever received in your life, Annie? Best advice? Um, I think it's, for me and my sister, I think we have our devotion and love of running this business. We focus, you know, we don't think of like, oh, let's do something other, other kind of business. No, we just focus. If it's not Panya, everything has to be inside Panya. And I think it makes a makes a big um, change in other people. I mean, I'm sorry, not change, but it, it, it plays a different um, priority in your life because, um, because of our father. I think it's a, it, it is something that both of me and my sister want to prove to him for whatever support he gave us, it wasn't a waste. And, and he, we want to make him proud of us for whatever, for the achievement we have. And by the time when he come visit us, he can see that we are, we are doing our job. We are, we are not just, you know, watching, but actually so often we have to work hands-on in the front of the house, cleaning table, everything, or in the back of the house, kept, keep uh, help cooking. And, you know, we are flexible to fill in the gaps of the entire operation anytime. You know, sometimes where there's no bartender, I can go bartend, right? So, and there's not enough cook in the back or we have people vacation, my sister go cook in the back, you know? So this will, this is something, you know, we, we would train, we train ourselves to be able to function, multifunction. Same as my managers, so they they do they they don't just cook or bake, but they have to do you know office work too. So we we are we are multitasking here, you know. Annie, I'm I guarantee you, your dad is very proud of you and your sister, and I want to thank you for taking time in your schedule to join me on the TV show today. Thank you, Rusty, for having me here. And uh, we have to thank uh, all my customers, uh, the community here actually, to support Panya all these years. Uh, being in this community for like 23 years, I think um, it, meant, it meant a lot for me and my sister. Uh, we truthfully thank you for all the support, you know, from our loyal customer. I have customers. Like since day one, we're still shopping here with us, eating with us, you know. So um, we we appreciate this this community supporting Panya for all the entire crew. Uh, it's very meaningful. Yes, and we need we need Panya to survive this pandemic. And Annie, I want to thank you, and I'm gonna see you soon. Okay. Thank you, Rusty. I will see you. The, the Laksa will be waiting for you. <laughs> Thanks, Annie. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Annie and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.